Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today we got something a little different, a little special. Uh, after the big announcement yesterday from Army Painter, uh, I just so happened to have these show up in my mailbox the next morning, which was pretty cool. So I'm uh, pretty excited to try these. Uh, you know, I love a thicker paint that coats uh, well. I, I learned painting on foundation paints back when GW originally created them. So I'm very, very curious to see how these work. So let's get over to the wet palette and take a look. All right, here we have, uh, this is actually Army Painter's wet palette. Um, I do I do like it quite a bit, uh, and this is what I use uh, on all my miniatures. So for anybody who's asking, this is this is my wet palette setup. So I uh, apologize for any shaky cam you might see. I was uh, had a little bit more cramped space when I was trying to put these paints out. But um, just first thing off the bat I notice is, look at that. There's no extra medium you have to squeeze off the bottles. These were put on my Vortex mixer for about 20 seconds. They do have the ball bearings inside of them, and as you can see, they're coming out quite beautifully. Um, no separation, even sitting on a wet palette. You don't have any bleeding or any anything like that. Um, very promising start. So I'm just going to grab a brush here and I'm just going to drag them out and see kind of how they respond um, being uh, thinned on the wet palette with just regular water. Um, it's pretty impressive. As you can see, they're not really breaking down at all. Um, just dragging them across, especially anybody that's worked with Goblin Green knows that it was st quite streaky. Um, the blue here also quite nice. Uh, you can see it does break a little bit to the end, but I did pull that one out more and thin it more. Um, and the orange, which uh, quite nice, quite nice. The orange, I was pretty impressed by that. So um, let's grab a extra miniature I have here to test it out. This is uh, one of the dwarfs from um, Highland Miniatures. I I printed it. It's a pretty cool line. Just as a side note, if you want to check it out. But let's take some of the blue here. And this has just been undercoated with a regular gray undercoat, but um, I loaded the blue on pretty hard. I didn't thin it at all. I took it from the original pile on the wet palette, uh, not the part that I dragged out. And pretty impressive, this coverage. Um, I know I saw some of those videos shot and thought maybe that was just, uh, I don't know, but it's behaving quite similarly. And uh, even in the areas that I thought maybe it was going on a little too thick, when I went back later and looked at it, it leveled itself out. I was quite impressed, um, as you can see. I tried to do it on an uneven surface, too, to see if you'd get any pooling or anything like that. doesn't appear so. And now we're going to try uh, a little bit on the edge here to see if it kind of bleeds over into the top coat. Um, not at all. And anything that does, it looks like it levels itself out as well, which is also pretty impressive. Um, it's pretty nice. And now I'm going to take a little bit more and hit an area that's partially dry to see if I can get any breaking or cracking. And nope. Pretty impressive uh, for paint, especially um, one that I'm using fairly thick. Um, quite, quite impressed. So let's let's try the green. So here's a quick look at the blue before it's completely dry. Let's head over to the green. As you can see there on the folds, it's quite smooth. The area that is dry. So let's move over to the green. Um, very, very vibrant green. Um, goes on amazing. Look at that. It's coating almost instantly. Uh, once again, this is just picked from the pile. It's not really thinned down too much, and it's coating in one shot. No issues at all. Vibrancy stays nice. It's not pooling in the folds, not getting any chalking, breaking, cracking, clumping, nothing like that. So initial impressions, I'm I'm quite impressed with this paint. Um, if all the paints are like this, you, you can be sure that I'm going to be using these paints going forward, especially given the vibrancy that you're getting out of them. I mean... The green actually stays, you'll see, it stays quite bright, uh, even once it's dry. So, and once again, we're going to grab a little more, and I think again here, let's see, do I do it here? Yep, right, I'm going to fill in the front first. I think I go back later and hit it a little bit more to see if I can get some more um, cracking or flaking on some of the dry parts. Yeah, right there, I did a little bit. And then here we go, take some, hit it. No cracking, no streaking, nothing like that. Very impressive, actually, very impressive. So now the real test, orange. Anybody that's worked with an orange, especially bright, very vibrant oranges, know that it is a nightmare to work with. So let's take a look. I'm going to hit the beard here, a uh, little throwback to the Slayers of old. And look at that. Beautiful, bright orange with quite amazing coverage, I must say. Uh, I'm, I'm pretty blown away, to be honest, about how this paint is reacting. Um, it's pretty pretty great uh very excited now to see the rest of this line um 
100%. So here also I wanted to get an area that had a little bit more <coughs> fine detail. So to see if it would clog up any of those details, not having a problem at all. At all. Looks fantastic. So give that a second there. Nice and shiny. Now I did want to hit it with the hair dryer because I heavily use a hair dryer in my painting. It speeds up the painting times like crazy. So I'm going to take my hair dryer and hit this sucker on super high heat very close. See if I can get it to warp crack anything weird like that. Um, I hit all the colors just to double check. Highest heat, close as I get to the gun. And uh, let's take a look here. Nothing. No cracking. And that's dry, so it does dry at a semi-gloss, it looks like. But the colors are nice and bright. Their vibrancy is withheld. There's no cracking or nothing. Very impressed with these.